Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional with uh, the Word. We want to look in Mark's Gospel, and we're going to be looking at. We're going to. I'm going to compare a couple of stories in uh, chapter seven and chapter eight. But before we do that, let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. We pray your blessings on the day for us as we go forth and as we uh, find your hands and your involvement in the world in which we live. We know that you have something for us and we want to do and partner with you in what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's a couple of stories in Mark's gospel that I wanted to pull out and kind of highlight. And I, I believe they are intentionally uh, like each other. Uh, in other words, when, when Mark is writing this gospel, I believe he, he intentionally... Uh, uh, compares these two stories. Uh, the first story is the story of uh, uh, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 31. It's the story of the healing of a deaf and mute man. And that's, uh, there are several verses starting in verse 31 about this man who gets healed by Jesus. Um, and then you flip over to chapter 8, verse 22. And you find the healing of the blind man of Bethsaida. And um, so he's, so in, in chapter 7, he heals a man who cannot hear and cannot speak. And in chapter 8, he, he heals a man who cannot see. And the way that Mark treats this, and I, I wrote some notes down here, uh, the comparison, comparisons between the two. Um, in the first story, an unnamed group brings a deaf mute to Jesus. In the second story, an unnamed group brings a blind man to Jesus. In the first story, they entreat Jesus to touch the person. In the second story, they entreat Jesus to touch the person. In the, in the first story, Jesus takes the person away from the crowd, spits and touches the person. In the second story, Jesus takes the person away from the crowd, spits, and touches the person. This is this is significant, but there's because there's only a few times where Jesus used his spittle to heal someone, and he does it in these two stories. Um, and then uh, in the first story, uh, the person speaks plainly. In the second story, the person sees clearly. And the first story, Jesus asks them to keep quiet about it. And the second story, Jesus asks them to be quiet about it. So there are a lot of parallels in these stories. And it's the story of, of a person who can't see, and a story of a person who can't hear or speak. And so these are, story, these are two people who are limited, uh, have limited sense, sensory perception. Um, between the two stories, which is, I, I think this is intentional, I think, I think Mark puts these two stories and he brackets a conflict or a, uh, you know uh, an encounter between Jesus and his disciples where Jesus is and and you'll see through the book of Mark he's constantly challenging them uh, to be perceptive um, there he's he's basically asking them to, to have spiritual perceptivity um, and in this story this is uh, between the two stories he feeds the 4,000 and he tells them after he feeds the 4,000, 4, he says in, uh, this is chapter uh, 8, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 8, uh, verse 14. Um, he says, well, verse 15, he says, Be careful, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. And he says this, he says, Watch out for the yeast of Pharisees and, and Herod. And they don't understand what he's talking about. They have, they don't, they can't perceive. You know, they're, they're just, they're limited. He's talking to them obviously spiritually, and they're thinking about physical bread and physical yeast and that kind of thing. And then he says to them, uh, in verse, uh, you know, uh, verse seventeen, <clears throat> he says, "Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still uh, not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened?" And then he says this thing that that I think Mark kind of pinpoints between these two stories I told you about. And he says, do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And that's the question for his disciples. Do you have eyes but can't see and ears but can't hear? And this is, these are the stories of the bracketing stories of these two men. Uh, the, the deaf and mute man had a tongue and he had, had ears, 
but his ears wouldn't work and his tongue wouldn't work. And the blind man had eyes, but his eyes wouldn't work. And so here Mark is pointing us to the central theme of his disciples for those who are following Jesus. There comes a moment when Jesus says, I want you to see, I want you to hear, and I want you to speak, but I, I want you to do it more than in the physical realm. I want you to, be, to have your spiritual senses awakened. And the, the wonderful passage of the, uh, the uh, wonderful thing about this passage is that it's not just a criticism of his disciples. It's not just, uh, you just, you just never see, you'll never hear. It's not that. It's a promise it's a promise that Jesus is the one who can make the dumb to speak and who can make the blind to see and can make, and can make the deaf to hear. So Jesus is the giver of these senses. So the encouraging thing from this story for all of us is that as we uh, are reminded how, how little we know and how frustrated we are with our, uh, you know, I, I, I get so frustrated sometimes with trying to understand the mysteries of God and trying to know what to preach and to trying to find the truth, I get so frustrated sometimes that I know so little. I go to God and I say, God, I'm so, I'm so dumb. I just, I just, you know, I was thinking the other day about teaching on the sovereignty of God. And I have been studying the sovereignty of God probably since I was a, a first newborn Christian uh, because it's always uh, intrigued me how God uh, deals with Pharaoh, how God uh, deals with uh, uh, people in, in the Roman, in the, in Paul and the Romans, and how he says he deals with people, and, and what is the sovereignty of God, and how does the sovereignty of God, um, you know, how is the back and forth between our, God's sovereignty and our free will, and, and I was thinking about preaching a sermon on it, and it just like, it occurred to me, who am I, who am I to speak of such uh, deep things about the sovereignty of God. Here you got Mike Snyder trying to, uh, ex, you know, you know, just try, trying to explain this stuff to people, trying to understand it. And so I get so frustrated with my uh, limitations, my spiritual sensories, and yet there is hope that comes from a passage like this that says, "Even you, I can open your eyes and I can open your ears, and guess what? I can open your mouth." and you'll be able to speak the things I show you. And I think that's the promise for us in this text. So let's bow our heads together. Father, as we see your disciples and their frustrations, we really feel their frustrations. We know what it is to have a lack of insight. Um, we sometimes are, are astounded by your mysteries. And yet we, we believe and hold on to the promise that you are the sight giver. You are the one who gives hearing to the deaf. You are the one who gives the ability to speak to those who cannot. And so we come to you uh, with hearts open wide and ask you to teach us and to be the one who brings light to us. Bring that light to us so that we might share it with others around us who are looking and searching for that same light. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you very soon. Have a great day.